Hey, thanks for watching the Fanboy Cantina. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Tommy Tech 112th Military Series action figure accessories and figuring out will it fit a G.I. Joe classified action figure. But before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to the Fanboy Cantina. We cover all kinds of things about G.I. Joe, about Star Wars, about Marvel, about Lego. Join the Fanboy Cantina. We'd love to have you. So one of the things that I have not liked about the G.I. Joe Classifieds uh, series is the accessories, are the accessories. You know, I, my memories of the original G.I. Joe line, at least in the very beginning, the accessories or the vehicles were grounded in some level of reality and that frayed over the years, right? And if you got towards the tail end of the real American hero line, you know, I got into that fa fantasy realm. And so with the G.I. Joe Classified series, very few of the, the weapons or other things look authentic. So I've been eager to find, are there other accessories to tap into? And now, of course, before you mention it, I know about the Marauder series. I, I have that over there. And I know that Valiverse is coming out with a number of really cool looking action figures and accessories. So I'm looking forward to that. But at the moment, I'm just looking to see what else is out there. And so that's what got me interested about this, this Tomy Tech line. Let's open up a couple of these things and see if they're compatible with G.I. Joe Classified. I actually hadn't heard of the Tomy Tech Little Armory line. I was just searching on Hobby Link Japan for 112 scale accessories and I came upon this brand. Now, after looking at it, I understand that the salt line has been around for a while. It has a line of action figures and military accessories and diorama pieces. The action figures are a little bit on the expensive side for my blood, but the accessories are about $10, $12, $15. $15. It depends on what it is. Some of them are more than that. Obviously, if you were to go onto Amazon, you might pay, you know, twice as much. Uh, but you know, recognize when you're buying from Hobby Link Japan, there is going to be the added cost of shipping from Japan to your address. And I understand that Hobby Link Japan does have a cheaper shop shipping option, but it'll take longer for it to arrive. So let's get started with the RPK 74M by Tomy Tech Little Armory. As you can see from this picture, it is a kit, right? And it's all molded in black and the pieces are very very small and you know i don't normally put together model kits so this was uh, uh an, certainly an experience to do such a thing but there's a lot of small parts that add to the detail in in the piece uh, the instructions are in japanese i don't speak japanese but i used the google translate app you know just in a couple of cases to read stuff in some cases, you may want to add glue. I had a tough time with the stock and especially I had a tough time with the, the hand grip. Just kept on falling off. Um, but as a finished piece, it looks really great. There are four clips, four magazines in this kit. Two of them have the post for inserting into the rifle and two do not. And it's just two different styles of clips. For the bipod, there are actually two separate pieces. One is this one, which is the closed version of the bipod, and then there's a separate piece that is in the open form. It does not open and close. I thought this look would be helpful. So at the top are two G.I. Joe classified weapons. So to give you a sense of scale, right underneath it is a 112th scale Marauder's rifle, right? And then beneath that is the Tomy Tech RPK. So at least comparing these two together, it does seem like in relative terms, the RPK may be a little bit underscaled. And here is Cobra Commander holding the Tomy Tech RPK 74M. And from the pictures, yeah, it looks a little bit small, a little bit small, but I think it looks perhaps close enough. I had a tough time and in putting the rifle into Cobra Commander's hand, it just kept on breaking off. But I think it looks pretty good. I can't emphasize enough, they are very delicate pieces. So you're not going to want to just chuck it into your toy bin or whatever else. They will break. They are very delicate. So it does warrant 
you know, just being careful with them. Next, we have the RPG-7 by Tomitech, and this is the rocket-propelled grenade launcher. It comes molded in three colors, unlike the RPK, green, black, and brown. And for me, this was a little bit easier to put together than the previous one. And I think it looks really, really nice in terms of display options. So you have the launcher along with two different scope attachments. And there are three ways that you can display the grenade. One way is with it inserted into the launcher. Another way as if it was firing. And then another way with that post. So, you know, your figure could be carrying the grenade. And, you know, it's very easy to just pop off that grenade piece and stick into the launcher, however, or whatever other piece as you choose. And for scale again, here we have a G.I. Joe classified weapon at the top, then a Marauders 112 scale uh, rifle, then the Tomitech RPK, and now the RPG-7. And you can tell the RPG-7 looks a little underscaled, if not a, a lot, compared at least to the RPK. And the hands of Cobra Commander here, yeah, it, it looks just a little too small. But, you know, in, in the background, if you had a diorama or something like that, you know, I think it's a good-looking piece. And it is very, very unique. And finally, we have Shooting Range A from Tomy Tech. I just wanted to see what does a diorama piece look like. There is a shooting range B that you can look up online. Uh, all of these pieces are molded the same color, this light gray color. And there are some additional elements like these cardboard pieces for the targets and other diorama accessories. And there are also decals to use on the set. The instructions are in Japanese and it's very self-explanatory, but if you wanted to, again, you could use an app like Google Translate and just put it up right there and you can read what it says. All of the pieces are clearly marked, so that makes it easier to put this set together. And that was true for the other two sets as well. It just takes following, following the instructions and looking at the pieces to figure out what goes where. After just a few clicks, here is most of the shooting range, and it looks pretty good. There was one part of the instructions where I was a little bit confused, so I did use Google Translate, uh, but it was really just like I couldn't find this joint piece. That was the problem. And I guess as a general safety tip, always be careful. And uh, as you can see from this picture, I had a little bit of a run-in with the X-Acto knife. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I think it is good to have that protective mat like I bought. And so I just wasn't chopping up my uh, table. The set comes with these ear protective, uh, you know, uh, hearing protection. What do you call these things? These ear muffs. And so they're, you know, they add to the diorama have a little bit of set dressing there uh, we talked about these targets before and it is a thicker cardstock and the cardstock uh, does work quite well for sticking into the plastic stand-up targets the set comes with these decals that you can add to the range i chose to not uh, put any of these things on it does have the numbers and the uh, distance ranges and that uh little yellow sign and the um, the thing at the bottom I chose to not put any of those on uh, here is the completed shooting range uh, short of the decals and you know I really like the look of this there is a quality control issue that I had on mine where there's a little bit of a, a bend or something like that on the plastic uh, but generally speaking a nice piece Oh, yeah, here are those earmuffs again, and, you know, you could put it onto Cobra Commander or, you know, whatever you want. I think this kind of diorama piece could work, you know, if you had, like, a, a G.I. Joe base of some kind. Or maybe it's a Cobra base of some kind. I, I think it could work, uh, you know, either way. Just to give you a sense of scale, this is uh, obviously Cobra Commander, and he's now standing in the shooting range. And it, it works out. You know, I think that table is a little bit on the low side relative to the height of the action figure. But it, it works out. I think it's a, a good, I think it's a good look. 
Now, what is a little bit funny, if you have one of the taller figures like Gung Ho, where he's, you know, considerably taller than Cobra Commander, he's going to bonk his head at the top. So you have to figure out how to, you know, situate him so he, he'll, he will fit. Uh, but for most of the other G.I. Joe classified figures, I think it will work out quite nicely. The set comes with two small targets and one larger target. With that thicker paper stock, they make for really nice targets to use in the set. And it's easy to you know, swap out the different designs and whichever one that you want to have. Probably want to, don't want to do this too often so the targets keep their shape. And there's uh, options for the large one and uh, options for the smaller version. So here are the three sets that we just took a look at together. The RPK, the RP7, and the shooting range. And I think together it, they look really nice as a complete diorama. My favorite is that RPK-74M. And in the hands of Cobra Commander, I think it looks very good. I do like the swap uh, ability of that bipod where you can have the closed and open version and in the open version I think it looks really nice. As for the RPG-7 however it does look small in the hands of a G.I. Joe classified action figure so that's a little disappointing. It is a good looking piece maybe if you had a big diorama uh, a figure in the background would be holding the RPG-7. Um, but as a piece, I do like it. I like that it's an option. Overall, my impressions are positive about the Tomitek Little Armory line. They are a, a little on the expensive side. They are a little bit underscaled, at least from the sample set of the three sets that we got here. When you put them together in a diorama, I think they really look cool. Just be sure to remember, they are delicate, so you want to be careful with these pieces. Hey, thanks for watching. Please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. This has been the Fanboy Cantina.